We do have a few announcements um, to make today. Um, we'll have a congregational meeting right after church today. Uh, we'll also have a deacons and elders meeting following, uh, following that meeting. Um, looking for volunteers to uh, record and edit Sunday services. Uh, see Brian Adams for that. Uh, the Butler Fireworks is this Friday. <clears throat> I don't know how July has gotten here so fast, but it is, it is here. And uh, it'll be starting at 6 o'clock. The uh, CWF is going to be handing out uh, Cracker Jacks. We'll also have a table there, uh, and you're welcome to come and sit with me at that table. Uh, we're going to have like some pre-registration forms for VBS and some handouts and uh, just some some regular information about our church uh, at that table. So if you're if you're out and about, come in and check in and you know sit down with me and, and talk for a little while. Appreciate it. Uh, VBS is July the 17th. We are doing a one day and it is from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. We'll probably actually start that at 8:30. Um, we'll do like uh, donuts and uh, um, milk and juice for those that come and pre-register. Uh, so we'll, we get the registration form, some information on them, and, and we'll go ahead and feed those kids before, uh, before we start at 9 o'clock. So just plan on getting here between 8.30 and 9 on that. Is there any other as announcements as far as announcements go? Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come to you in prayer this morning, we thank you for the many blessings that, that you have given us this week for, for those that we have recognized, but especially for those that, that maybe we take for granted. And dear Lord, we just thank you for those blessings as well. Dear Lord, for those that are traveling, we... We ask for traveling mercies for them, that you bring them safely back to us next week. Dear Lord, for those that we have lifted up in our prayer list this morning, dear Lord, for those that have lost loved ones, we just, we just ask that you be with those families and that, you, that you're close to them during this time and that they can feel your presence as as they suffer the loss of a loved one. Dear Lord, we know that grieving is part of the process, and we just ask that, that you are present as always during this time. Dear Lord, for all those unspoken requests this morning that we have lifted up during our quiet time this morning, we We can take peace in knowing that each one of those prayers that we uttered was heard and will be answered according to your will, not our will, according to your time, not our time. And dear Lord, we thank you for the comfort that, that you give us by doing that. Dear Lord, we just pray for our upcoming vacation Bible school that that many will come and, and that they may learn about you, about who Jesus is and what Jesus has done for us and what he will do for them as well. And all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. We thank you for those that have given this week and for those that have given last week, and we thank you for that offering, and let's give, us, let's give thanks for it. Dear Lord, we do thank you for the opportunity to give. We thank you for the ability that you have given us by 
giving us talents that, that we have the opportunity to give. And dear Lord, for those that have given so unselfishly, we just ask blessings not only upon those that have given, but upon the offering as well. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Is it... The title of my sermon this morning is, is Giving, and as Paul is, is writing uh, his second letter to the Corinthians, and, and he talks about Jesus is rich in heaven, and then he comes to earth in poverty, in poorness, so that we may become rich. And he gives us this table as a, as a reminder of that, that, that we will be rich in heaven, maybe not monetarily, but we will be rich in, the, in spiritually the way that, that we need to be. So as we come around this table to partake of these emblems, let us take them with all the sincerity that they deserve. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you today for the blessing and gift of life that you've given to each of us. We're thankful, Lord, that we can come together freely as a church to worship, to praise you, and to share in this communion that's been prepared for each of us. Just now, Lord, we ask your blessing on this bread that we're about to eat, knowing that it represents the broken body of your Son, Jesus Christ, that was broken freely for each of us. Lord, we pray that with this nourishment, we would be strengthened so that we could draw closer to you each and every day, and that in every area of our life, we would be able to follow your will for us, Lord. Lord, these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. On that night in the upper room, when Jesus took the bread, he blessed and he broke and he gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body which is broken for you. And as often as you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we are again thankful for this Lord's Day morning. And we are especially thankful for the opportunity that we have to come around this thy table to partake of this cup, which is symbolic of Christ's real blood, who gave up his life on the cross of Calvary so that we may have life and have it everlasting. Father, we ask that we would take of this cup that you will guide, guard, and direct us in all that we do. These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. As we raise our cup to honor the Lord. And in a like manner, Jesus also took the cup and cup, saying, This is the spilled blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. And as often as you drink of it, do so in remembrance of me, and drink ye all of it. Today's reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 7 through 15. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, so we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command but as I am testing the genuineness of your love against the eagerness of others, for you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you may become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It may appropriate to you for you who began last year only to do something but not even to desire to do something now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by the by completing in accordance to your means for if the eagerness is there the gift is acceptable according to the one who has not according to what 
one does not have. And I do not mean that you should be that you should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of fair balance between your, your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that you may that there may be many a fair balance, as it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. May God richly bless the reading and understanding of the Holy Word. Three sons left and went out on their way and prospered. Going back, they discussed, discussed the gifts that they were able to give their elderly mother. The first said, I built a big house for my mother. The second said, I sent her a Mercedes with a driver. And the third said, I have you both be. You know how mom enjoys the Bible, and you know that she can't see very well. So I sent her a talking parrot who can recite the entire Bible. It took 20 monks in the monastery 12 years to accomplish this, and I pledged to contribute $10,000 a year for the next 20 years, and it was worth it. Mom, all she has to do is tell the parrot chapter and verse, and it will recite it for her. Soon after, Mom sent out her letters of thanks. She wrote to her first son, Milton, the house you built is too big. I live in only one room, but I have to clean the whole house. She writes to the second son, Marvin, I am too old to travel. I stay home all the time, so I have never used a Mercedes, and the driver is so rude. She writes to the third son, my dearest Melvin, you were the only son to have the good sense to know what your mother likes. The chicken was delicious. <laughs> I think Randy's heard that one because he was laughing before I ever got there. <laughs> Today's text could be one about stewardship. It could be preached about stewardship. But Paul is collecting an offering, and he's collecting this offering for the church in Jerusalem. And he encourages those in Corinth uh, in verse 11 to finish what they had started a year ago. They had given an offering before, and he's encouraged them to match or to increase their offer uh, to that church in Jerusalem this year. Paul is telling about the gifts that we have according to those gifts. And I like the way Paul ends with verse 15. The one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. As I'd shared at the table, today's sermon is on giving. And we could obtain this in many ways. It doesn't just have to be through money. It's like kids when they're little and, and you force them to say thank you or you're sorry and they really don't mean it. Are you really helping them by making them say the words if, if they do it regurgitly? The same way with giving. If you don't want to give and you feel forced to give, are you giving out of happiness or out of regret? If you, I don't know if you've noticed the past few weeks as I give the offertory prayer, I, I thank God for the opportunity to give. And, and I really mean that uh, because he has blessed me and he has blessed you all 
in many ways and, and give us the opportunity to give. In verse 10, Paul is saying, is saying that he's giving us his advice. And I think he gives us um, some very good words today uh, in this short you know, short scripture reading that we've read from um, the letter that he's writing to the Corinthians, the second letter. And I'm going to break this, um, this down into three points today. So it's going to be a traditional type of sermon, and I want to look at that first point. And everyone has something to give. We can all give in many different ways. I think the most precious thing is, is maybe you'll get a little older is time, is, is giving of your time. You can help around the church, you can teach a class, uh, you can help with the youth, you can visit shut-ins, you can help in the community. VBS is coming uh, just a short time away and it's a perfect way for you to give. Uh, we have circulated the sign-up sheet uh, for you to give of your time doesn't cost anything but maybe a little gas to get here to clean our streets and to be good neighbors. Those that have planted flowers and, and, and fixed the doors out front, they gave time. The supplies were bought, but it was the time that was precious to get that done. So you can give in many different ways. We take up an offering every week. How do you determine of what you give each week. Do you tithe? Do you pray about what to give? Or do you give what is left? How long have you been giving the same amount? If you got a set amount you give every week, how long have you been giving that amount? Have you prayed about increasing that amount? Or maybe in, in your situation, maybe you prayed about decreasing that amount. Paul talked about a fair balance of not giving too much to the point where you become put pressure upon yourself, but to give out of abundance. Let's take a look at that second point. Can you give too much? Give, give, give. One time a skeptic said to a preacher, I can't stand this Christianity business. All that... I ever hear from you Christians is to give, give, give. The preacher thought about that for a minute. And he said, you know, that's about the best description of Christianity that I've ever heard. Is to give, give, give. You know, this person was looking at it from one side. The preacher was looking at it from the other. Uh, and perspective changes the way you look and you think about things. If you have never given, uh, you may look at it like this skeptic. But if you have given and you have seen the return on your investment, or if you have seen the blessings that, that God has given you or given the person that you've given to, uh, what a blessing that is. I do believe that you can give too much. To others, but not to God. We can make our children, if we give them everything that they want, we can make them dependent upon us. And I don't think we're doing them any favors by doing that. They need to be independent people. They need to be able to take care of themselves. So by what you think is helping, you may actually be hurting. If you give them a nice room and nice toys, make them clean the room and put their toys up. Uh, don't do everything for them. When welfare started so many years ago, I think welfare started as to give someone a hand up, not to give someone a hand out. And we all need help from time to time. We all need a hand to help us up, to get us out from where we are back to where we should be. And you know, I've seen welfare in Falmouth uh, three generations of welfare now. 
Um, and I know that was not the intended purpose when it started uh, so many years ago. As, as we went through the Depression, it was to pe get people a hand up. So um, maybe we need to, to look at something about that. Paul <clears throat> tells about Jesus giving from becoming rich to becoming in poverty. And it says in 9, that so may he become rich and have you have you really thought about heaven and about heaven being rich? Uh, Jesus came down from heaven where Paul says that he was rich and he came to poverty here on earth so that we may become rich. Uh, have you ever thought about it that way? I, I, you know, I really. I really haven't thought about it that way. You know, I've seen I've seen and, and buried some some very rich people, but I've never saw a Brinks truck follow them to the burial site to, for them to take their money up to heaven. Uh, so Paul is not talking about richness in in that way, in material way. He's talking about being rich in spiritual way. Everything when we get to heaven will be provided for us. Um, we won't need our wallets. So uh, I guess if I go before Sheila does, just don't bury me with my wallet because I won't need it any longer. All it does is give me a bad back the way it is now. So I think Paul uniquely, in, in just a couple verses, really changes maybe the way of our thinking of by him coming and being poor here on earth. He, he has given us the opportunity to become rich. Let's take a look at that third point. Can you give too little? Um, most definitely you can give too little as you can give too much. And as Paul is writing to these Corinthians, um, he is writing to a, a cosmopolitan city. He's writing to a port city where, where they enjoy a very good life. Um, think about maybe New York, of, of how expensive things are up there, about wages and, and, and the way things are up there as opposed to maybe here. So Paul is, is telling them because they have a lot, or they have much, that they need to give, not to the point where it hurts, but they need to give out of abundance because those in other places are not as well off and could not as give as much as he collects this offering to take it to Jerusalem. I want to read um, a little bit of a scripture from Mark. And, and Jesus is observing people as they give an offering. And you'll all, it's a very familiar scripture and you'll all read it, but I, I think it, it fits very well here. It says, and, and this is Jesus, as he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large um, sums. And a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins worth about a penny. And when he had called his disciples together, he said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more than all who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of abundance. But she, out of her poverty, she has put in everything that she has to live on. Now Paul's not asking for this. Paul is asking, and he calls it a fair, a fair balance. Uh, he doesn't want us to give to the point where we're in poverty, where we have stretched ourselves so thin that, that we are now poor. But he, he also wants us to give of what we have. Brian chose uh, his artwork there. Uh, that's a very famous book, The Giving Tree. And um, 
I've read that before here, and, and I've thought about that as, as I was reading and, and preparing for this sermon. And, and that tree tells us a great story about giving everything that it had. Uh, if you know the story about the boy continues, continually comes back to this tree and asks it for more of itself, and, and, and it first gives the branches, and then it... You know, it gives a little bit more of the trunk and then it gets to the point where there is nothing left but the stump. And, and as this man has gotten older, at the very end, that's all he really needs is a place to rest and to set upon the giving tree stump. So um, I like the artwork, I really do. Let us, uh, let us see the thought for the week. Paul calls it a fair balance. I call it living in moderation. Try not to live to one extreme or the other, but in moderation. Amen. Let us pray. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we we thank you for the opportunity to give and and, and how truly rich we are. And, and Dear Lord, we just pray that we will be rich in heaven someday. Watch over us. Be with us where we fail you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.